Learning to operate the Dewpoint 331 properly is essential to a farm that wants to get the most out of their equipment. In this video, we will go over the basics, safety, pre-operation training, what a typical operation looks like, and lastly, maintenance. The first thing every operator should do is download the Staley West app found on the App Store and on the Google Play Store. This is where the most up-to-date owner's manual, training videos, and other resources will be found. It is good to become familiar with the Dewpoint 331 machine. It holds 500 gallons of water in the supply tanks and 250 in the boiler itself. That gives you two and a half to five hours of runtime. 120 gallons of diesel, which will give you between five to 10 hours of runtime, and it weighs 7,000 pounds dry and 16,000 pounds fully loaded. The 331 is very safe. If an emergency arises and you need to shut off the machine quickly, you can touch the power icon on the touch screen or you can turn off the tractor. For your own safety, never remove any component on the boiler while it is still under pressure. Make sure the brakes on the steamer are working properly. Always make sure your tractor steering stops are set to prevent oversteering. Once a year you should perform a boiler safety test to ensure all safety components are functioning properly on your boiler. To ensure a healthy boiler, only use soft water or reverse osmosis treated water in the boiler. Make sure you also add half a gallon of boiler guard chemical each time you fill up your water tanks. To hook up the steamer to the tractor, the tractor will need to be equipped with a standard set of SCVs and a 3 8 inch case drain. Tractors with closed center hydraulic systems and IVT or CVT transmissions are preferred, but not necessary. On the steamer home screen, we have the power, burner, water system, hold mode, blowdown, and menu buttons. The power button will turn the steamer on and off. The burner button will turn on the burner system without the water systems. The water system button turns on the water system without the burner. The hold button should be used when stopping in the field for a repair. This is not meant to be used when turning around at the end of a windrow. Press the blowdown button when prompted unless you are stopped in a field. Here you are given your current levels of fuel, boiler water, steam pressure, and supply water. To learn what all the icons in the status window mean, go to Menu, then Information. On the right side of the screen, you control the steam distribution. You can turn on and off both the top steam valves and the bottom steam valves. Green indicates they are active. The overall steam rate is controlled by the twist knob, and the steam is turned on and off by pressing the twist knob. The ratio of steam applied to the top or bottom of the windrow is controlled by the steam ratio buttons. Adjust the steam ratio to match your baling conditions. If the windrow is completely dry with no moisture on top or bottom, the steam ratio indicator should stay right in the middle to apply steam evenly throughout the windrow. If there is moisture on the top part of the windrow but the bottom part is dry, the steam ratio should be set more towards the bottom. If there is moisture on the bottom part of the windrow but the top is dry, the steam ratio should be set more towards the top. In hot and dry conditions, with an evenly cured windrow, the steam ratio indicator should stay right in the middle, but you may have to run at a much higher steam rate to get your desired effect. The amount of steam being applied is shown on the green bars on the steam outputs. Remember to always turn the steam off when turning around, stopping, or in a light or absent windrow spot. Once a year or any time the tuning needed icon lights up, the burner should be tuned. Follow the instructions from test 1007 in the owner's manual to tune the burner. An important setting on the steamer is the PPM or parts per million water setting. Go to Menu, then Water Quality. 
The PPM setting should be based off of your current PPM of your supply water. The lower the PPM, the shorter a blowdown will last and the longer run time you will have. The blowdown keeps the concentration of the water in the boiler at an appropriate level so that the water in the boiler will not become foamy and spill out into the baler. If you need to stop while the blowdown is still active, stop the blowdown to avoid creating dead spots by draining hot water in one place for an extended time. Manual mode is a useful tool for testing all of the actuators on the machine. Go to Menu, then Inputs Outputs, and press the hand icon on the right to activate manual mode. Then use the twist knob to select which actuator to open and close. You can also activate the fan and the water pump in manual mode. For these options, hydraulics must be engaged on the tractor. Before you start baling with steam, there are a number of things to consider. The max internal bale temperature, the max temperature allowed for stacking, the suggested moisture percentage for different sized bales and different crops, what moisture percentage the windrows should be cured to before steaming, which moisture sensor is most accurate when dealing with steam. All of these considerations are answered in our Baling with Steam page in the Owner's Manual. Baling with Steam tends to make your bales heavier. Here are some tips to help you maintain consistent bale weights when baling with steam. You will need to run a lower chamber pressure to get the same weight in the bale. You may need to reduce your chamber pressure by as much as 50% compared to conventional baling. To allow you to run at more normal chamber pressures and to provide finer bale weight adjustments, Staley West offers a reduced size hydraulic ram kit for certain baler models. Staley West also offers a bale chamber pressure sensor kit that provides a digital reading of the bale chamber pressure and allows for more precise measurements of the bale chamber pressure. Bale flake count will affect bale weights. Do your best to maintain consistent flake counts. IVT and CVT transmissions make this much easier. If your baler is equipped with friction wedges, we suggest removing them before operating with steam. Precise bale weight adjustments can be made by adjusting the steam rate once you get everything else dialed in close. We recommend using the Gazika moisture sensor because it is most accurate with steam. The Gazika screen will give you an instant reading, an average reading, and a peak reading. Before operating the steamer, Perform your pre-operation maintenance. Clean the supply water filter. Open boiler drain valve for 10 seconds. Grease the PTO connecting shaft. Inspect gauges, sensors, and sight glasses. Turn on the tractor, engage the steamer hydraulics, and turn on the steamer. The steamer will automatically go into hold mode and the steam purge will open for 15 seconds. Wait for the startup sequence to finish and the black check mark to appear. Finish the pre-operation maintenance by opening the steam manifolds to purge water and make sure none of the nozzles are plugged.
begin bailing, check the wind row, set the steam ratio, set the steam rate, 40% is a good starting point. Start the PTO and adjust bail chamber pressure to the desired pressure. Start bailing and turn on steam. Observe the Gazika readings and make adjustments to the master steam rate every 3 to 5 bales until you reach the desired moisture. Adjust steam rate 5 to 10% at a time if necessary to meet your moisture target. Now adjust bale chamber pressure to get your desired bale weight. Allow 3 to 5 bales between adjustments. Remember, bales will tend to lighten up during the first 15 minutes of baling as the baler warms up. You will likely need to increase chamber pressures periodically during this time. Adjust the steam ratio indicator if the wind row conditions change. Every so often, you should visually inspect your bales to ensure you are getting the desired effect. When freshly steamed bales come out of the baler, they will feel soft and spongy. Don't worry, the bales firm up as they cool down and they stack excellently. If dark spots or wet flakes begin to appear in your bales, consult Fault Condition 2003 in the Owner's Manual to find the possible causes. Remember that you are responsible for how your bales turn out. When you are finished baling, perform the post-operation maintenance. Purge steam through the baler hardware nozzles at 100%. Clean off the steamer and baler with compressed air. If a fault appears, look it up in the owner's manual and try to resolve the problem. Call your dealer if more expertise is required. Once a fault is resolved, reset the fault by pressing the Reset X button. Then turn the steamer back on. Red stop faults have to be corrected and reset or the machine will not operate. Amber warning faults will remain active but the machine may still operate. All of the long-term maintenance for the steamer can be found in the maintenance schedule in the owner's manual. Also, the manual shows step-by-step -step instructions for each maintenance procedure. Along with steaming hay comes added baler maintenance due to the steamer. Remember to blow off the baler and steamer each time you fill up the steamer with water. With more moisture in the baler, it is very important to use a high quality grease. Also, remember to service the baler based on the bale count or hour count. A baler behind a steamer will often be used three times as much as a standard baler. Don't forget, this means maintenance will be required three times as often. Thank you for watching the Dew Point 331 Operator Training. For more information, you can contact your local dealer or your local Staley West Territory rep.